So by popular demand, I'm going to tell you how I went about making my Keyforge box here. So firstly, we've got a cardboard lid that I made, and this has actually got the cover image that is kind of stolen, really. But I'm sure they won't mind, given I am using it for Keyforge. And then in here, I've got space for six decks and then a token tray here. So these decks I have put in these lovely little tuck boxes here. And I'll show you in a minute how I made these. And this is what I started with. I started by making these tuck boxes. And then we've got the token tray which has a little lid just to hold everything in place. Now, these aren't official tokens. These are just ones that I made up and stole from various games that I had left over. To make this top box, you're going to need GIMP. So start by downloading that, and you can easily just search for GIMP download, click through, and then download for your appropriate software and install it. Once you've got GIMP installed, you're then going to want to click on the link in the description of this video, which will take you to the script written by Stephen Brown, who's done a fantastic job and it works wonderfully. So you'll just go to the Google Drive and download. Once you've got it downloaded, you're then going to want to open your downloads, copy the file, and find your program files for GIMP to paste them into and it might be in a different location to you for you but mine is in share gimp 2.0 and then scripts so then paste that script into there you can close that window and you can close the internet and sorry for infinity you're going to want to open up your gimp window here and then go file create and you should see under the create options tuck box somewhere click that and it'll open a new window where you can put in the size of the tuck box you want now it should fit on one a4 sheet so you can do one piece i prefer angled but you can do any type of tuck that you want i went for a width of 70 mil and 94 mil on the height and 23 mil on the depth but just measure your deck once it's all sleeved or not sleeved, however you want to do it, and then put the measurements in. Then click OK, and it does its thing and creates the file for you. Once you've done this, I tend to create a new layer just so that I can have a white layer. So we just want to click white and OK. This way you can just see everything a bit more clearly. Now we need to design this box to look the way we want. So you're going to scan in your cards. Now you're going to want to scan the front and the back and then bring those into GIMP. So here we've got an example of the front and the back of a card and I just drag and drop it into my GIMP. Now you can see at the moment these are much bigger than what I actually want to end up with. So I'm going to start by clicking on this one and moving it so it lines up to the top and then I'm going to scale it by clicking on here and oh, cancel that it's got something selected so let's just click none on the select now we can scale the whole thing and we're just going to scale it down so that it fits nicely in the box how we want to see it so, uh, go for that for example and we can then move it around again now what i did is i also on the one i did was to go like this and copy a bit of this background here. So just selecting it with the rectangle, control C to copy, and that's now in the paintbrush. So what I can do is if I create a new layer, uh, that's the size I actually want for this. So let's duplicate this layer and put it in there. So we're hiding the background now. So we've copied that. What we're going to do is with this new layer, we're going to again go for a rectangle select and we're just going to select the rectangle that is making up the front, like so. And then what we're going to do is with this layer, 
we're going to crop it to that selection and then we're going to go to our paintbrush and we want to change our brush to clipboard which we've got if you don't have it set to clipboard you're going to need to change that and we're just going to go for a nice big brush got our layer selected and we're just going to go like this so it's just filling in the black the background a bit and what you can actually do is kind of fuzz these layers together if you want and then also with this back image here what we're going to do is cancel our select and we want to with this layer turn it around so we want to transform rotate 180 degrees and then we're gonna move it down here and definitely on bottom there we go so you can see just getting a bit of color there and you might want to blur it which you can do using this tool here you can kind of smudge it all together and just make it look a bit nicer and again we just need to scale the back here so that it oh, got the wrong layer selected so let's just select the correct layer and try this again So with doing this scaling you want to make sure you've got this link connected up so that it's keeping the aspect ratio so that it stays looking okay and once we've done all this we've got it all in place all we need to do is print it off then you're just going to need to cut out the print so do be careful to make sure that you cut all the solid lines but that you're not cutting the dotted lines the dotted lines are just going to be for folds and I already had some 250 GSM card so that's what I've used for doing mine and uh, that seems to have given quite a nice kind of rigid but not too thick and too hard to like put for a printer or whatever but if you want to do it thinner I think you could get away with thinner and if you wanted to do it thicker obviously it just gives a more durable box then so once we have finished the cutting which i'm nearly done now there we go we then need to do our folding so we want to fold along all of the dotted lines and i just did this by eye but you might want to do it like using a ruler or whatever and you just kind of find the dot go along you're just going to want to do this for all the different folds and then once that's all folded up we're then going to need to glue it. Now, you can use double-sided tape or PBA glue. What I used was my wife's craft glue, which I'm fairly sure is just a type of PBA glue. It's just liquid glue, dries clear, and you're gonna want to start, fold the bottom tabs in and put a bit of glue on those. So you just wanna make sure nice amount of glue or whatever you're using to stick it down. And then you're gonna want to fold in your sides and just kind of hold them in place till they dry and got a nice right angle there. Then once you've done those, you'll fold in the front bit, putting glue on the side tabs here and here, making sure your box is all closed up and then that'll be your box done. Just need to leave it to dry. And once it's dry, it'll look something like this and nice and quick to open cards just slide in and out nice and easily and that's done then for the bottom of the box here i just used things that i had from making inserts so a lot of you will have this this is foam core here all it is is we've got a base piece which is if i check my measurements um ba -ba -ba -ba, it's 170 millimeters by 119 so that'll be 119 that way 170 that way and then just got two ends two side pieces now i've made the side pieces slightly lower than the end pieces and the reason for that is just so that when you're dropping stuff in you've got a bit of a grip there and then this middle bit is literally just there to give a bit of added support and then making the tray much the same it's just the lid is just another piece of board with the middle bits being shallow enough that this sits in held in place by the outside bits and it's just split down the middle and then two little dividers put in and that's it with the walls and that just then fits in nicely with the decks which just leaves 
the cardboard box here. Now this was done in GIMP, all I did was got the image and made it to the measurements I wanted to go round the box and that I then created my top image. So this is, I think, just slightly bigger than 119 by 170. I think it's 175 by um, 124. So I've given five mil either way, leeway, and it's actually a bit loose, so it could afford to be a bit tighter. Then I just copied that down and did down that side and down that side. So it's just, again, same card I use for the tuck boxes, and it's printed on that. And then you can see where it folds over into the box, maybe just about make that out. Let's see if we can get a better view on that. It's not very clear in the picture, but yeah. Basically, it's just a folded sheet that's been cut down to size. So it's just trimmed that way, no other way. And then there's the same on the inside. So we've got two layers there overlapping to create part of the box. And then the inside of the box, we've got the sides go between those two layers. And the way these work, is again they're just printed on A4 sheets of card and folded so that we've got the picture here measuring the size that we wanted that side to be and folded in so that they kind of go in under these two layers holding in tight so it's all about just folding layers of card together with lots of glue so that's how I made my box